basically to be become a clan, um, the main thing is to get on IRC, Internet Relay Chat, and that way you can organize the clan events. Um, right now there's something called Clan Ring that's on, and we fight against other clans, and there's, there's actually refs that um, are officials, and they watch throughout the whole game and make sure that everything is, is fine, and it's, it's really uh, an excellent hobby. We've been waiting for Quake for about two years, and I remember the day it came out, I and, and a group of my friends were poised in front of our computers waiting for the release so we could download it from the net. And uh, you know, when we finally got it, um, let, let's just say our girlfriends didn't see us for, for quite some time. They're Quake Widows. Quake is a truly three-dimensional uh, simulation of combat uh, with some of the grooviest weapons you can get your hands on. Everything from a, a single barrel shotgun, um, nail guns, all the way up to rocket launchers. Um, it has different environments you can go into, like you can go underwater. Uh, if you stay underwater too long, real physics apply and you start gasping for air. Um, if you fall into lava, you don't last very long, just like in real life. Quake is carnage. Carnage is good. They're all over the net. There's servers running 24 hours. The, the way it's going, I mean, I'm surprised in the future they won't be classifying 3D games into, the, into an Olympic category because it is taking um, skill, reaction time. You know, it's not just a game, it's more of a sport, really. Quake World is being launched, which will allow us to uh, get a running tally of, our, of everyone's frags, everyone's, you know, death toll. I know, I've went through every 3D game that's out there. Um, I'm very much a 3D game buff, and Quake just rules them all. Even though a lot of games let you play with other people, what Quake does different is that it makes it very easy for people to play with many, many other gamers over the internet and for free. What's especially unique about Quake? A lot of things are very unique about Quake. First of all, the graphics are incredible. It's the most compelling 3D experience I've experienced on a flat monitor. Uh, other games call themselves 3D, but if you look very carefully, they're just cleverly disguised 2D. Um, another thing that makes Quake special is the multiplayer capabilities, which I just discussed a second ago, and lets you play with up to 16 people now, that is. Uh, later, you can probably play with more at, in the same game, same time, and for free. There are many multiplayer options. You can play with people uh, via direct cable connect. You can play over the modem. You can play over a local area network. And you can also play over the internet. And what makes it special is that right now, there are servers all around the world where people can jump in and jump out whenever they please. And they can do it for free. It's part of the game and part of the experience. This is by far my favorite game at this time. And there's just so much you can do with this game. Every time I play, there's something new that I discover with it. The te technology is incredible, and one of my favorite hobbies right now is actually just going into Quake and modifying it to do whatever I want it to do. I don't think there's anything that comes close, quite frankly. The technology is just far beyond any other game that's out there. Quake World, it's basically my research project into extending, uh, extending the network play aspects of Quake. The first stage of it that we're in beta testing right now that we're about ready to release is a new network protocol that provides more latency tolerance for the client so there's less lag and the network play is more robust in handling of problems along the connection. At that stage, it's just Quake with better network play. It has a few nicer features where the status is changed. It has persistent user accounts where your ranks are tracked through everything, but the gameplay is exactly what it is right now. The next phase that we're changing is specific rules for clan play, for more persistent ranking of <clears throat> entire team scores, special rules for team games, more customization for the servers. and. Probably also at that stage, we're going to be adding ghost clients, spectators, full server demo records for sportscast playbacks. And the next stage after that, the final experimental stage, will be adding persistent servers, where instead of the servers changing levels, you hop between the servers on there. And the, problem, the reason that's going to be last is that that will probably, to do it really well, that's going to require new data, like changing some levels so that they actually have multiple entrances and exits, while all the stuff that we're doing right now is purely data compatible with Quake. So a new download for Quake World is only a few hundred K zip because it uses all the data that's already there. And it also means that while we don't really expect to make any profit out of this, so we can't 
I throw our entire company at developing new media for it. So this is my research project. I'm sitting down here. I'm spending my time doing it. The other guys are working on Quake 2. And this is going to get some of the technologies will be rolled back in along Quake 2. But mostly we're doing it just to learn the lessons of figuring out what we're doing here because you know we haven't nobody's really done it on this scale before. Well, we're in uh, the timetable right now is we're in beta testing with everything right now. We just finished the DirectX implementation with full screen video and good sound and mouse control under Windows uh, last night around midnight. So it's getting its first testing right now and. We know that there are compatibility problems. Right now, when it runs on a system, it runs flawlessly. It's actually a little bit faster than the DOS version because the compiler is better under Windows. And full screen video, great sound, great control. But it's only working right now on about half the systems we tested on. We have problems between Microsoft Windows, DirectX, Cytex Display Doctor, the video drivers. There's just a lot of things that are Windows has not saved us from the configuration issues yet. We're hoping that we'll get it all straightened out in a couple weeks. Mm. Yes? With um, what could be a financial windfall with the success of Quake, uh, do you foresee ID going in any other direction with games rather than just the first person shooter? Uh, as far as exploring other directions of games, we are probably going to be staying with the first person perspective action games. That's our forte, that's what we do real well. And if anything, we're probably going to move a little bit back towards some things that we've done before with the higher tech staying in the, the dirty, dingy future. It's something that all of us like. We enjoy the style. And it's obvious that lots of other people enjoy what we our impressions of that. So uh, no, I don't think you'll see us branch off into RPGs or anything else anytime soon. Yes? So the fourth third edition should be the blaster which great. OK, the support for 3D hardware stands right now as we have the port to the rendition Verite chipset completed, which is going to be shipping in three or four different boards here soon. And it worked out pretty well. It's got some, you know, somewhat of a speed boost over the software version. It looks a lot nicer with the bilinear interpolation. And overall, it worked out pretty fair. We have to caution people a little bit that it's not a pure win necessarily, because while the peak speeds are faster, uh, the hits that you take under changing conditions are also worse. So some people may not prefer the performance on there, but it looks a whole lot better. For other cards, it's unlikely that we're going to do another native port right now that we are going to be doing. After we ship the Windows version of Quake, we are going to do a direct 3D version. But not many, not many cards are going to perform very well on that. Really, the only one that we think is going to perform well on that is 3DFX, because they have enough raw horsepower to go ahead and, and live through the inefficiencies of going through another API there. And that should come out OK. Any plans in the future of taking advantage of MMX technology or Okay, MMX technology is not a useful thing for Quake right now. It's not a useful thing for anything that we do right now. And I've just seen a demo yesterday. Okay, what MMX can do for you is it won't make a game run faster, but you can make it look better at a slightly lower quality. You can do direct color, 16 or 24 bit, for basically the same performance, a little bit slower than what you can do 8 bit color graphics the way we're currently doing them. Now, Quake was already kind of pushing it market wise, we're saying requiring a Pentium. Uh, so I didn't think we really had any speed to throw away there for trying anything else. Uh, our future technology, so Quake 2 will not have any MMX optimization. Our future technology is going towards direct color. This is our last 8-bit color game. You know, we are going to direct color for everything, and we expect to get a lot of benefits out of that. The software-only version will probably use MMX for that, but really, the future generation, when we're looking that far down the line, we're really expecting everyone to have some form of hardware rasterization on there, even if it's something you know, on the level of an S3 onboard chip or something. Just when we move to direct color, we know that the pure straight x86 software architecture is not going to cut it. MMX will help there if you're still running on software, but we're not going to be designing for that as a baseline. Yes? Uh, 